Hey, it's Jesus Castillo from Ruby Guides. Let's say we have a string night is one. It says learning Ruby is fun, and it is, right? And uh, what are we going to do with this string? Well, let's say we want to replace all the vowels. So E, A, U, we want to replace them by the uppercase equivalent. In other words, we want to make E into uppercase E, like that. Or the same for A into uppercase A. How can we do this? Well, there are like um, most programming languages, especially Ruby, there are many different ways to do this. The best way we depend on the specific outcomes um, that you want to achieve um, and the characteristics of the methods that you are going to use. So remember, methods do things, right? Um, with methods is how you are going to tell Ruby objects to change or to answer a question, things like that. For example, the G sub method, which means global, like the G is for global, sub is for substitute, right? So this have a meaning, it's not just a random name. So global substitute, what do we want to substitute? Well, as uh, you said, we want to substitute the vowels by their uppercase, uppercase equivalent. So every time that you want to replace something, substitute something, that's the same word for to, the same thing, two words for the same thing, so substitute, replace, you want to look for the this method, gsub, because that's its main purpose, to replace things in a string. Okay, so how do we use it? Well, that's not the main thing of this video. I want to show you about tr method, which means translate. But before you can understand the usefulness of that method, I want to compare it against gsub. That's one thing that you can do to understand things, is to compare similar things against each other to see how they're the same and how they are different. So let's see GSOP first. And then if you keep watching, you will also learn about TR. So GSOP, global substitute, as I said, we want to replace, we want to use a regular expression, which is a pattern matching uh, language. Regular expressions, I, I'm not going to cover that in this video because there is a lot to that. So let's just follow along. So it's A, E, not the e, e would assign, E, O, U, I. Okay, so now we can say, we can say, okay, how do we want to replace this? Because with GSOP, we're going to match something and we're going to say, how do we want to transform or replace it with? In this case, we can do this nice little trick, which we can say, up case. And that, of course, achieves our result or outcome. As you can see, it works. We replace the E for the uppercase E and all of that. How does that work? Well, we say if there are any of these characters, then get it and do something with it. What something? Well, uppercase it. So that's what this is. We are going to upcase whatever we match here and what we're matching, we're matching the vowels, right? So that's our result, that's what we wanted, but there is a better way to do this with a more appropriate method for this specific use case. And that's the tier method, which is what I mentioned before. How is the tier method different from GSOP? Okay, so let's take a little uh, moment to think about that. TR is translate, but TR doesn't use a regular expression, it uses a string. In fact, it uses two strings. And basically what we're going to be doing is mapping directly from this string to this string. Here's what I mean. If I write here an A, and on the other side, I write uh, the number one, we're going to replace all of the A's with ones. That's what that means. Now, no, that, that's not our goal here. We want the uppercase A. So we write uppercase A, and that's where we get uppercase A. Now, what if we want all of the vowels, all of the characters that we want to replace? We just write them A, E, O, U, I, and then the same thing in the other side, but uppercase. And 
you want to make sure that these are matching with this. They are in the same order. As you can see, we got the same output. In fact, you can do this. Here's another nice little trick for you. So you can check that they are indeed doing the same, right? If you're not sure, check. Always check, don't, ask, don't make assumptions. Don't say, okay, I think that's working, but you have a little doubt in your mind. Well, you can check. That's one of the nice things about programming. You can actually check. Uh, you should check. And by the way, that's one of the things you, you do with TDD, test driven development, is check. You're checking that things work uh, as you are expecting them to work, as you want them to work, right? But we, can, we don't need that here. We can just do a simple test between our two method calls here, between GSOP or TR, and we get true. So they are producing equivalent outputs, right? So why, why would you want to use TR? Well, TR doesn't use regular expressions. So it's a little bit simpler expression as you can see, right? So if you can use TR, I think it's good to use if it matches your use case. Now you should probably run, if you, are, if you want to know the performance, you can run benchmarking uh, to test um, which is faster if that's what you're looking for. Okay. I'm not sure if they're faster, but it should be because this regular expression uh, is more complex and everything that's more complex takes more processing power, right? Than just comparing some strings. Now let's go into the details of TR works because there is a crucial difference between just uh, using a regular expression or not, or any performance difference that there might be. And that's that TR works letter by letter, symbol by symbol. Here's an example of what I mean. If I try to change the word in to the word on in our little phrase that we have, you will notice that yes, it changed. We change is to in fact, we didn't. We we change in, but what we what happened is we only change the i into an o. You see? L let me do that more clearly here, so we can compare it. The i changed into an o. The s didn't change. And then what also happened? We changed this i somewhere else. So this says learnong. Ruby, what's that? I don't know. What's Lernong? We just made up a new word. So that's not quite what we wanted, right? But if we do the same thing with GSOP, we get a different result. Uh, hold on. Uh, oh, yes, I, I, I did a mistake. Sorry, it's not is, it's in, right? So it helps if you do these things correctly. So here, is, with this, we're changing the string. So we went from is to on. So now we're changing wolf, but we're still getting learn on Ruby, right? We don't want learn on Ruby. We want to keep learning. We just wanted to change that. Now, if I do GSOP instead, you will notice the big difference is that GSOP understands that this is a whole word. This is a word is one block, is one package. I should be change only this. So learning is still learning. We we then change into learn on, but we still change our is into on. Right? So that's the difference. TR replaces this by this and this by this. GSO replaces everything by everything if you use strings. If you use uh, regular expressions, then it works slightly different. So when we do this. Um, with our vowels, we're replacing A with A, E with E, O with O, right? So if you get, if you match them incorrectly, you're going to replace, you're going to be producing this. So make sure that they are in the same order and the same quantity, because also if you're missing, it's going to try and match the, the last one with this last one, okay? 
And if you only had A, for example, that's what's going to happen. It's going to replace all of this with this. So that's how TR translate works. It's very interesting when you have this case where you are replacing a specific letters, not words, with another letter or character. So that's TR. And if you want to learn more about the JSON method, because JSON method has different forms, has the regular expression form, has also a block form, and it has the string form, which is shown here, right? If you want to learn more about that, I have a video uh, where I go over these details. I show you a lot of sample examples how to use um, JSON to its maximum effectiveness, effectiveness or to its maximum, to its best use, right? I also have an article on my site, rubyguides.com, where uh, you will find these examples. Okay. Now, uh, so what's the importance of understanding this? Well, remember Ruby has many built-in methods and that's one of the nice things about Ruby, right? Has many built-in methods like DR or GSOP or many other methods. The more methods you are familiar with, the better code you will be able to write. That's why this is important. It will make you a better, more professional Ruby developer. The more built-in methods you are able to understand and not only know or memorize, but you need to be able to understand the differences, right? So you need to study Ruby methods to become a better Ruby developer. So that's it. If you want to learn more, uh, make sure to watch more videos on the channel right now. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and visit my website, rubyguides.com. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.